diagnosed with ADHD in my second last year of law school in 2020, I was a fucking mess. The cherry on top was having a panic attack right before my corporation's law exam. But a month later, I discovered the concept of a second brain. This system helped me quit law and pursue my passion for creating content. In the past 10 months, this system has helped me earn my first dollar online, gain 3,700 followers on threads, build an email list of over 220 subscribers, and create an online community with over 100 members. It can help you do the same in four easy steps. If you understand these three crucial steps first. The content conversion cycle. It's the process of consuming new information and then formulating ideas and then creating content from those ideas. And all in all, this forms a sort of continuous loop. Looking at consumption or input first, everything is information, not just the content you consume online, but literally everything in real life. It's the smell of flowers. It's the texture of your partner's skin. It's the taste of cookies. It's the color of a sunset. It's the sound of pattering rain. Everything is content. Everything is information. And your conscious and subconscious mind consumes millions of these sensory inputs every single day. Some of those inputs are then used to form ideas, and that is the next phase of the content conversion cycle, formulation. And the final phase of the whole cycle is creation. Creation is connecting the dots of pre-existing ideas that happen at this phase to then generate like a new output. And importantly, every single phase of the content conversion cycle plays a crucial role in creating anything new, in creating an output. Several inputs generate an idea, and then two or more ideas generate an output. And this whole cycle continues when some sort of output then returns back to the consumption phase as an input, and it begins anew. The main brain myth. The main brain myth is the misconception that the human brain can effectively store and create ideas, leading to creative burnout and stress. This is a huge misconception because your mind is meant for having ideas, not holding them. There are three reasons why the main brain myth is bad. Cluttered main brain. Your main brain is the brain inside your head. It's your literal brain. The New York Times estimates that your main brain consumes about the equivalent of 174 newspapers worth of content each and every day, and that is about five times higher than what it was in 1986. And if we zoom out here, you can probably see how your main brain gets cluttered when you're expecting it to remember all of the information from all of these different inputs that you come across on a day-to-day -day basis. When you're relying on your main brain to remember all of this stuff, it's like your email inbox. How do you feel when you're at inbox zero versus inbox like 1787? You see all of those emails, all of these inputs, and you feel overwhelmed and stressed. Quite simply, these feelings limit your creativity and just make your content worse. Another reason why the main brain myth is bad is because of mental masturbation. Mental masturbation is when you spend time on things that feel productive, like finding, consuming, and organizing content, but don't actually lead to any useful outcome. Knowledge workers spend about a quarter of their day just searching for information, often without success. If you can do the maths, this amounts to wasting at least one entire work day every single week. The final point about why the main brain myth is bad is this thing. It's the content trash can. The average person forgets about 56% of new information within an hour, 66% after a day, and 75% after six days if there is no reinforcement or connection of that information with prior knowledge. So about three quarters of all of the content, all of the information you consume after six days just ends up in this thing, the content trash can. Think about how many shower thoughts are in this thing. The whole point of this is that if all this information is in the content trash can, it's obviously not going to get to these other stages of the content conversion cycle, which means that you're limiting your creativity. You're actually just deleting it, ruining it completely, because you're not giving any of these inputs a chance to get to later stages of the cycle. If you are a content creator, perhaps you can see how problematic this is. 
It's not that I'm blocked, it's that I don't have enough research to write with power and knowledge about that topic. It always means not that I can't find the right words, but rather that I don't have the ammunition. Here is how you find the ammunition. The second brain solution. The second brain is an interconnected digital memory aid that stores your ideas, boosting creativity and reducing stress. Think of it as the world's best personal assistant. It's always ready to capture valuable information for you. If that isn't compelling enough, here are three reasons why you need to have a second brain. Firstly, it is a content powerhouse. This is referring to the point that over time, your second brain becomes this compounding repository of knowledge. It is a content powerhouse containing all of the best parts of every single PDF, YouTube video, podcast, all of those inputs that you've consumed over time. And it's just all stored in this powerhouse. And unlike the content trash can where it's just wasted, all of this information is just ready to be used at a moment's notice to create great content. So your second brain, it's a digital memory aid that your analog main brain simply can't compete with because your main brain, it can't remember for shit, but digital brains can. That's what they're designed for. So when we're a victim of the main brain myth, time is working against us because if we're not using information very soon after, it is entered into the whole content conversion cycle as an input, then our chances of forgetting it are very, very high. But the opposite is true when it comes to using a second brain. And the goat of second brains, Tiago Forte, highlighted this in his book, Building a Second Brain. Having a second brain where lots of ideas can be permanently saved for the long term turns the passage of time into your friend instead of your enemy. Next benefit of having a second brain. It is what I like to call brain GPT. So this is getting at the point that your second brain, it is the antidote to mental masturbation. Your second brain, it's like having chat GPT for your brain. All of the data that this chat GPT is based on is everything you've consumed. And you can just recall it and get personalized outputs from it at a moment's notice. This means you don't have to waste time sifting through shitty SEO articles on Google, struggling to find just like one accurate answer because you can simply ask your second brain. For example, let's say you want to refer to an insight from one of Hormozy's latest YouTube videos in your next newsletter. But if you are a victim of the main brain myth, like most of us are, you just forget 75% of that information from the YouTube video. So this means you have to go through the following steps. You'd have to go back to YouTube. Then you would risk getting distracted. You'd go and find the video. You'd scrub through the video to find an insight that's relevant to what you want to talk about in your newsletter. Then you would transcribe that insight. And finally, you'd insert it into the newsletter. Or you can get that insight from your second brain within seconds. Last big benefit of having a second brain is you have a decluttered main brain. When you have a decluttered main brain, you boost creativity. Remember, your second brain is an interconnected digital memory aid that stores your ideas. Creativity lies at the intersection of ideas. These intersections, which are vague in your cluttered main brain, become clear in your organized second brain. And when those intersections become clear, you unlock creative potential you didn't know was possible. A neuroscientist by the name of Nancy C. Andreessen said it best. Creative people are better at recognizing relationships, making associations and connections. Your second brain helps you notice these connections in a way that would literally be impossible in the physical world. As you highlight important parts of all the content you consume, these inputs, you're subconsciously training your main brain to identify only the relevant parts of information you consume, meaning that your main brain just gets better at filtering out all of the irrelevant shit. All in all, this helps you create a composed internal environment that helps you navigate the external chaotic environment. Put simply, you improve your quality of life. And those are the three ideas that you needed to understand. It's why you need a second brain. Here's how you can actually build one. The Notion Second Brain System for Creators. Unleash your creativity and productivity in four easy steps. It helps you reduce stress and save a shitload of time. But first, why Notion? Why not all of the other softwares? It comes down to three things that 
Notion is just better at. Firstly, it's better at organizing all of your information. The key point is that Notion allows you to navigate your ideas in a way that mirrors the interconnectedness of your brain. So relying on scattered tools like Google Docs and Evernote doesn't allow you to make those connections as easily, which means that you're disrupting your creativity. Notion also has better integration. Notion combines a lot of features from a bunch of other tools, which means that you can customize it to fit your needs. And you can't do this as well with other softwares like Trello or Asana, in my humble opinion. Finally, Notion has just better sharing. Notion lets you share whole pages or databases, offering more control over collaboration compared to Microsoft Word or Dropbox. I could harp on about why Notion is superior for a long time. Don't go through the software skipping. I've done it already. I've spent years doing it. Just use Notion. And if you do, you should. Here's how you can set up the whole system to reduce a lot of stress and save a lot of time in those four steps. Step one, craft vision statement. Your vision statement is one general sentence that encapsulates your vision by outlining what you'll do. That's the how. How often you'll do it. That's the when. And your desired identity. And that is the identity element. Here is an example of my vision statement that you can model. So I will consume, ideate, and create authentic content every day so I can become a six-figure creator who has fun serving his people. Hopefully you saw that the consume, ideate, and create part mirrors the three phases of the content conversion cycle. Consume, consumption, ideate, formulation, create, creation. Your vision statement is your why for doing all of this. If you don't have a why, you're going to run out of motivation and it's not going to keep you going when the times get tough. So once you've got your why, we then turn this huge mess of a cluttered main brain into something much more composed. Step two is organize inputs. First thing you want to do here is set up your Notion and Readwise accounts. And I've left a detailed description of how you can do that. If you just Google create Notion account and Readwise account, you'll be able to figure it out pretty easily. But if you want to get a month free for Readwise, check out the affiliate link. You don't get anything if you use it, but you just get an extra free month. And also check out the affiliate link for Notion. Um, I do get like 20% or something of your subscription price for the first year. Yeah, that's in the description. Check it out. Next part is selecting your inputs. These are all the inputs that I like to have in my second brain. We have audiobooks, books, articles, blog posts, miscellaneous websites, PDFs, YouTube videos, podcasts, voice memos, tweets, newsletters and emails, Q and A's, which is really just prompts from ChatGPT, and then just other thoughts. If you like to consume all of these, great. Literally just follow along and connect all of it up to these different softwares. But if you don't, let's say you don't do audiobooks and you don't want to have any inputs from those, just ignore the arrow that leads to Audible. By the end of step two, you want to have all of your inputs connected to a relevant software and that software connected to either Readwise or Notion. If that's confusing, there are specific instructions for all of this in the description. Go and check that out. Once that's done, we move to step three, which is where we just store ideas. As a second brain creator, which is what we're working towards here, this phase of the content conversion cycle is easy. Because this whole system is automated, all you do is simply consume information at the input phase and then let your second brain store it for you. As more of this content is stored in your second brain, your main brain is freed to start to see more connections between them with the help of the second brain. Finally, once we have ideas formulating and stored in our second brain, we move to step four, which is create content. When your main brain connects two or more ideas that are stored in your second brain, you either document it and just note it down as an input that you can then go and develop later on in the content conversion cycle, or you can use that creation as an output to share with the world. And that is how you go from being a burnt out main brain creator all the way to a chilled out second brain creator. Simple summary. The content conversion cycle, it refers to consuming information, formulating ideas, and then creating outputs, new content, and this forms a continuous loop. 
The main brain myth is believing your brain can store and create ideas, causing stress and creative burnout. That's where the second brain solution comes into play. It's a second brain that remembers everything for you, which allows you to not only boost your creativity, but reduce a shitload of that stress that you get when you're a main brain creator. And finally, the Notion second brain system for creators is the entire system that we've just discussed. It organizes your content in four easy steps, vision, consumption, formulation, creation, helping you reduce stress and save a lot of time. To wrap up, here is the lesson. It is the one thing you should take away from everything we have discussed in this lesson. Overcome the main brain myth and embrace the second brain solution through the notion second brain system for creators. To sign off, here's a final quote from the godfather of second brains, Tiago Forte. Your professional success and quality of life depend directly on your ability to manage information effectively. With the creator economy growing rapidly at over 20% per year, this is true now more than ever. But you don't need to do all of this alone if you're just starting from zero. It can be overwhelming, I get that. This lesson has given you an overview of the whole Notion Second Brain system for creators, but I also have an entire course inside my online community that shows you step-by-step -step exactly how you can set it up with mini videos for all the different inputs and creating software connections and all of that. Check out the link in the description to join Saints College, the community, and you can get the entire Notion Second Brain course for free. Anyway, that's it for this lesson. Keep it simple until the next one. By the way, I am so close to 100 subscribers. I spent about 100 hours putting this lesson together, consuming inputs to put everything the way you've seen it. So if you liked this lesson and you would like to support my work and continue getting more of it, please subscribe to the channel. And check out the video over here to watch another lesson just like it.